Hey guys, this is Daniel and Kelly from FitnessSplinter.com and today we're going to be tackling a question we get quite often and that is, how many calories should you be eating? So there is no one right answer for this question that's going to cover everyone because it depends on your gender, it depends on your body weight, it depends on your activity level, uh, and your goals. I know that's not exactly the answer you're probably wanting to hear right off the bat, but there is a formula you can use to get you a little bit better idea of exactly where you need to start, at least. For the equation that can help you calculate how many calories you might need to consume to gain, lose, or maintain, look in the description below. The starting point for figuring out how many calories you need to eat comes from your basal metabolic rate. So people call that BMR oftentimes, and what that stands for is how many calories you need to consume just to maintain regular body function. So if you just sat in the couch all day long and your heart just sat there pumping blood, you didn't do anything, that's how many calories you would need to maintain those bodily functions. So like Kelly said, your BMR is only your bare, bare minimum to stay alive, basically. On top of that, any kind of physical activity you do, even simple things like walking around your house during the course of the day, uh, light cleaning, heavy cleaning, uh, if your job's really physical, all of those things are going to change how many calories you need per day quite drastically, actually. So that is where the, the kind of the guesswork comes in as far as how many calories you might need on top of your BMR. Everyone's different in the number of calories that they need to consume each day, but for example, uh, every day I eat at least 1,000 calories over my BMR. So that minimum amount that I need to eat, I have to eat 1,000 over to not feel like I'm starving and to not lose weight. And that's partially because of my muscle content and partially because I'm a very active person. Another example would be how I eat. Uh, on top of my BMR, I generally eat another 1,000 calories if I'm doing just regular general everyday life activities. On the other hand, when I'm actually really, really training and doing either four to six times a week of really intense uh, training of some kind, whether it's strength training or cardio training, I can eat 15 to 2,000 calories on top of my BMR. So that's a pretty big window there. Some people might only be a couple hundred over their BMR. If they're really, really sedentary, other people, you know, if you're talking about elite level athletes or people at least train like them, uh, you could be three, even 4,000 calories over top of your BMR. It just depends on how much effort you put in on a daily basis. Now, besides the BMR calculators that also take into consideration your uh, daily activities, they're still pretty inaccurate as far as giving you a real number. There are more, uh, slightly more accurate versions that are actually uh, digital or electronic devices that you wear throughout your day that'll give you a little bit better idea of what you're burning. But to tell you the truth, Kelly and I prefer the more uh, listening to your body approach and getting an idea of, of exactly how your body's responding to how much activity you give it, how much uh, food you give it, and that sort of thing. So the idea isn't to uh, obsess over every little detail, how much you've burned, how much you've consumed. It's more, it takes a little bit of trial and error at first, which can be kind of scary when you, whether you want to lose weight or maintain weight, but just trusting that when you're hungry, you can eat. When you're full, stop eating, listening to your body. That's really the best way to go long term. Now, that's a very good point is that if you take the time to kind of learn how your body feels when you're getting enough calories and learn how your body feels when you're not getting enough calories. It takes a little bit longer to get going on your goals as far as like making progress towards uh, uh, losing weight or, or what have you. The, the benefit though is in the long run, you already know how your body feels when you're going over or you're going under, so you don't have to worry about it ever again. Whereas if you're using a, a digital calculator or you're using uh, an actual calculator, a written out calculation to tell you how many calories you need to be eating, you won't know exactly how your body feels. You're not going to be paying attention to that. So if you ever stop using it, then you're going to be kind of lost. Whereas if you start by listening to your body, then you can actually have a much more productive uh, uh, balance as, as far as your, your calories in, calories out for the rest of your life. It helps you avoid being kind of locked into that dieting weight loss mindset forever because that's definitely not something you want to, that's a cycle, it's kind of a slippery slope and you don't want to get locked into that mindset. It's better to just listen to your body and give it what it needs to feel best. Exactly. Basically, it's like anything else with health or weight loss. 
you want to be able to sustain it. So whatever you're doing to figure out how many calories that you need to consume each day for whatever your goals might be, you want to make sure that you're using a method that you don't mind using forever. So that's where it comes in, where it is better to listen to your body. Yeah, the never ever diet for a, a or change your diet for a, a specific small period of time. If you're just trying to shoot for, oh, I just want to look good in my dress for a yada yada party, or oh, I want to make sure that my muscles are nice and big to show them off over summer or whatever. I mean, that that's a nice goal, but it's not long term. You need to be thinking about what your body can do for you over the next you know, 10, 20, 30 decades. You need to be making sure that your body is going to be there for you when you need it. So we apologize that we don't have a definite answer in terms of how many calories you should be eating, but in reality, it's going to be very specific to you, even very specific to what kind of day you've had. Every day is different. And if anybody tells you they have a specific answer for you, they're lying. They don't know what they're talking about. Everybody's different. There's no calculation that's ever going to be right for anyone. So we hope this helps get you a little bit closer to that overall healthy diet and your overall healthy lifestyle from here on out. Uh, as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.